Next, we will move to controlled mobility from hook lying position. So, for controlled mobility, now we will allow the patient to move in a larger range of motion. And the advantage of this movement is that it is allowing the patient to develop control of the lower front. So, uh, we could start with, the, uh, for example, rhythmic initiation technique. And um, let's say that we would like to do the movement, for example, from midline to this side and return. We could do it either this way, we could do it this way, or we could do the full range. But we will start with one direction. Now, in rhythmic initiation, uh, we will say, for example, that uh, they, the movement will be to uh, move towards the mastiff in this direction. Okay, this is our goal. I will start by moving you passively in this direction, okay, and return to the start position again passively. Now I want you to help me with the movement. So try to help. Okay, relax. I will return you to the start position. And um, next, I want you to do the movement against resistance. So I will place my hand for the resistance, and I want you to move towards the master. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Good job, relax, and I will return to the start position. So this was the rhythmic initiation technique. As we said, for some patients, the control of this position might be difficult because we are bearing weight to the sole of the foot, and this might cause the extensor hyperspasticity, or hypertonicity. So we might uh, help do this exercise, for example, with reducing the uh, weight on the foot, by placing both legs on the ball. And now we could repeat the exercise on the ball. So it's the same movement. And the advantage of this position now is that the um, feet are not in contact with the ground. And as you can see here, uh, we are doing rotation of the lower front while not moving the upper front. So this is to emphasize that this is our goal. And we could do the rhythmic initiation again. Another technique for controlled mobility that can be done from this position is dynamic reversal. So in dynamic reversal, um, let's do the full range. Say this is an advanced stage now with the patient training and we were able to master movement from midline to one direction and then to the other. Now I would like to do the whole thing. So Zay, the movement now will be from uh, start position here, let's say, and we will move to this side against resistance and then move fully to this side against resistance and we will repeat this whole range. Okay, so let's start and move to the right. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Okay, now let's switch to the left. Okay, it's my right and your left, my right and left. Okay, now let's switch, switch, keep going. Okay, so now this is dynamic reversal. And as you know, switch, alternatives of dynamic reversals could be by, for example, adding hold at the end. So hold, hold, hold. Now let's switch and move, 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 move. Keep going, keep going, keep going. And hold, hold, hold. Now switch. Okay, so this is one thing. And the other would be to change the amount of range that we are accomplishing. So we could do um, increments of range of motion, move to this side, and keep going, keep going, we'll add more range, go, go, go more, 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 and let's switch, and do more, 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 keep going, we'll add more range, keep going, okay, so this is increments of range of motion, or decrements, switch, and from here, keep going, and now we switch, so now I'm allowing less range of motion, so we could do this, increments, or they can switch. Okay, and relax.